Growing up with a bunch of Polish family, I ate a ton of pierogies. And today I'm going to show you how to make them with three different types of filling. Pierogies use a sour cream based dough, which is super easy to make and very forgiving. So if you're the type of home cook who doesn't usually make noodles or doughs or bread, this is a great recipe for you because it's pretty easy, you can make a lot of them, and the quality of the end result is a lot higher than the amount of effort that you need to put in. So the three varieties that we're going to make are a beef, onion, garlic, and scallion, a potato, cheese, and scallion, which is a classic preparation, and a potato, cheese, scallion, and bacon. But one of the beautiful things about pierogies is that you can make any filling you can dream of and put it in there. So try these three out or make a new one and let me know how it goes in the comments. But for these three, we need eggs, green onions, garlic, cheddar cheese, cooked beef, onions, cooked potatoes, and cooked bacon. So to prepare these, get a couple of potatoes and skin them and then add them to a boiling pot of water and cook until they're fork tender. While those are going, add all your bacon to a pan and cook until crispy, then chop it up into little bits. Grate some cheddar cheese, chop up some scallion, and then cook the beef. You want the beef a little bit crispy but not too overdone so that you can retain some of the beef flavor inside the actual pierogi. Finally, mince your garlic, cut up your onion, mash your potatoes, and you have all your ingredients for your fillings ready to go. So you can certainly be more scientific with the amount of ingredients you use for each filling, but I'm going to just use sort of equal-ish parts for all of them, and it turns out really well. If you have leftover filling, you can always make a nice omelet with it or just fry it up in a pan because it's delicious. So get one bowl for each filling and then add a bit of green onion, a bit of garlic, and some onion to each. I'm also going to add cheddar cheese to all three because that's my preferred cheese, but farmer's cheese is also really delicious in pierogies. Next, crack one egg into each mixture. The egg is going to round out the mixture and provide a nice sort of binding effect so that all of the filling can stay together while it's inside the dough. So now we're gonna add our different ingredients. So on the left, we're going to add our bacon and our potato. So we have our bacon and potato cheese. In the middle is just gonna be our classic potato cheese. On the right, we're just gonna add beef, no potato. Stir these up and then set them aside or put them in the fridge because we're not gonna need them until our dough is ready. So for our dough, we're gonna mix up five cups of flour, one pint of sour cream, two tablespoons of melted butter, two whole eggs, one egg yolk, two teaspoons of salt, and two teaspoons of olive oil. Stir to combine all these ingredients and then combine into a somewhat tacky dough ball and knead for a few minutes. Then transfer to a work surface and knead for about a minute until the dough is soft and supple. This is a very soft dough, so if you need to add a little bit of water, make sure you do, or some sour cream even, to make sure that you're gonna get a nice, easy, puffy dough to make your pierogies from. Once you're satisfied with your dough, divide it in half and cover it for about 10 minutes to rest. Lightly flour your work surface and roll out each half of your dough. What we're gonna do is roll out our dough and then cut it into just about three inch rounds. So find something that you have in your kitchen that's about three inches diameter. You're not gonna cover all of the surface area of the dough you've rolled out so far. So cut out as many rounds as possible and then bunch up the dough and re-roll it out to the same thickness and continue this process until you can't do it anymore. This will take a little while, but it's worth it because you're gonna get a ton of pierogies from this. And you don't wanna waste any of the dough that you've worked on. Once you've punched out all your rounds, we're gonna actually move on to filling our pierogies. You wanna use a small rolling pin if you have one. A six inch rolling pin is great for this. And the general process is that we're gonna put a small amount of filling in, fold them over, and then pinch them closed with a fork. It's really easy to actually overestimate how much filling you can put into one of these pierogies. And the downside of putting too much filling in is that you'll stretch the dough too much and when you go to boil them, they'll actually burst and then you'll end up with a bunch of filling in your pasta water, which is super annoying and also you don't have a full pierogi. So start with it a little bit at first and get used to it and then you can start to pack them a little bit thicker. There's another style of fold where you don't use a fork to pinch but you actually just roll the dough edges back over onto each other and pinch them closed with your finger. You can do that with a little bit of water if your dough is too dry, but they're effectively the same. So we're going to repeat this with our other fillings and the other half of our dough and make as many pierogies as we can, and then we can get to cooking them. For some context, I got about 60 pierogies in total, about 20-ish for each filling type. And these are perfect to put in a big Ziploc bag and throw in the freezer. If you end up doing this, make sure that you put some cornstarch on the outsides of the pierogies before you put them in the bags so that you can actually separate them when you get them back out from the freezer. Because if you don't, they might absorb some water and then glue together and when you try to boil them, they'll burst again, which is not what we want. So to cook your pierogies, add them to a pot of boiling water and give it a stir to make sure they don't stick to the bottom. If you pack them tightly, they'll sink to the bottom of the pot and they'll rise to the top when they're fully cooked. 
Then you can use a slotted spoon to fish them out of the pot and into a nonstick pan with a healthy amount of butter and a little bit of olive oil to make sure that they crisp up. Try to avoid getting water from the pot into the pan because that can make it a little bit more difficult to get the crisp that you want on the pierogi. After a few minutes, flip them over to get the other sides and that's it. A perfect way to serve these is with some caramelized onions and the sour cream sauce. Personally, my favorite is a basil pesto sour cream. I hope you guys try out this recipe. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing to the channel, and I'll see you next time.